On this trip, Marley and I headed deep into the backcountry to a new area we hadn't yet explored. Over the two days, we'd planned on doing some camping, some scouting, and some hunting for both coyotes and jackrabbits. The weather called for rain and possibly some snow, so I was expecting the worst. Hey guys, Marley and I came up into the mountains today. We're having some pretty bad weather. We've got a good amount of rain coming down. This is a new area that we haven't yet camped. So I've just pulled in here. I set up a tarp to try and keep some of the camera equipment dry. I built a fire pit here. Right now we're just gonna kind of look around, see if I can find any dry wood and we'll try and get a fire started. I'm just happy we were able to get out of the house and bring you guys along with us. I really have no idea what's in store for the rest of the day or tomorrow, but I'm really hoping that the, the rain will kind of die down. We'll check back in as we go. As you can see, I've just set up a tarp. This is a five by eight. Pretty small, but it works pretty well for this type of setup. And I just uh, tied it off on the four points. And then I ran a center guide to one of the branches that's above us just to give it kind of a little bit of a teepee. So the water is gonna shed off of it pretty easily. But this definitely works in a pinch when you really need to get out of the rain. I got a fire started and it really wasn't easy to find dry wood. What I was able to do is look underneath uh, some of these larger trees and at the base is usually where you can find wood that has stayed dry. And so I kind of found some of that to get it started. And I found some wet pieces that I put towards the bottom. What that's going to do is kind of dry them out. At least I got a fire started. Even if I do find some wood that's fairly wet, it's still going to most likely burn. I also use branches and a good rule of thumb is if, you know, it snaps off, it's dry enough. If it's kind of bendy, it's wet. So I go around and I, I find the stuff that snaps off easy and I know it's most likely dry. I gotta say this uh, tarp has worked out really well. It's definitely something you could keep in your pack. It takes up no space, no weight. It goes up really quickly. If you were hiking and you got stuck in a, a storm and you just wanted to get out of the rain, it's perfect for that. And the other thing that's nice is you can not only use it as a shelter, but you can build a fire that heat is going to get reflected back in here and it's going to hold in the heat. I've actually taken my jacket off right now because it's, it's, it's so warm in here. Perfect temperature. I can see the rain has started to die off out here. So this was a perfect setup for us. I could see how you definitely could sleep underneath one of these if uh, you really had to. Really happy you guys came along with us. It's actually turned out to be a pretty nice day. We do have some cloud cover. Thankfully the rain stopped for now. Um, but this is just a beautiful spot. Really nice setup. I think we're going to try and get some more firewood. I'm going to pull some things out of the Jeep and just kind of set up the camp here. So I don't have to deal with it later. And then uh, I'll pull out the rifle and maybe we'll go do some hunting. One of the rifles I brought with me on this trip is the Daystate Red Wolf Safari. This is in 30 caliber, puts out about 85 foot pounds. I did a review on this gun months ago. This is gonna be part of the air gun survival challenge. And part of the reason I brought this rifle is because it is electronic and I wanted to see how the function is in wet weather, cold weather. And I just wanna see how the electronic system will hold up. I went ahead and mounted a Aztec optic scope. I've got the Donnie FL Ronin moderator 
which quiets this down considerably. And it's just a beautiful gun. It's got a very unique wood stock, side lever, adjustable cheek piece. And it's a beautiful gun. I hate to get it out in this weather, but you know what? That's what it's made for. Right now, Marley and I are gonna hike up through this little canyon here. There's a small trail that'll take us up on the top of this mountain. Hopefully by getting up higher, I'm gonna have a better view of below us and I'll be able to look over the sagebrush. And so we're just gonna kind of hang out up on top of that mountain for a little while and see if I can spot any movement. We just came to the top of this hill. This is just above our camp and I'm able to look out here. It's just a beautiful view. And I'm able to see probably about 400 yards out here. There's a good amount of open space that allows me to kind of see some movement. A lot of times I'll just sit up here in one spot and you know, a lot of times it might take an hour or two hours and sometimes you really just don't see anything. In that case, you're kind of better off walking around trying to flush something because especially in weather like this, the animals are just kind of hunkered down. They're really not moving much uh, as they usually do when it's sunny. It's kind of dependent on the situation. But this is open enough down here, you should be able to spot some, some kind of movement. I've seen some deer up here. I have seen coyotes. And this area is probably about 15 miles south of where I normally camp. And so it's quite a bit different as far as the hunting. There's a jackrabbit out there, and he's at about close to 432 yards. So he is quite a bit out of range. But they are moving around here, and at least I've found a, what I think is a fairly decent spot to come back to in the morning. And chances are if I get out here early enough, I'll be able to get some shots that might be closer but you can see he's just pretty much oblivious to me right here. And I could try to move closer, but there really isn't anywhere to be able to hide. And I'm gonna zoom out and you guys can just see how far that guy is. Just an incredible distance. After spotting several jackrabbits and locating a pretty good area to hunt the following morning, Marley and I headed back to camp. We followed the fastest route, which was an old Jeep trail, and it was just in time because the weather started getting pretty bad. Marley and I barely made it back to camp before it just started pouring. So I was really happy I was able to find a good overlook to be able to spot some of those jackrabbits. And usually where there's jackrabbits, there's coyotes. So I think the plan is to get up pretty early and hopefully the weather will be better. I'm hoping it's not gonna be raining and we can head down there. I'll see if there's any jackrabbits around. We'll kind of glass the area. If I don't see any, I'm gonna set up a coyote collar and we'll see if we can pull in a coyote. When I was out hiking around, I came across this old piece of sheet metal that I guess somebody was using as a target. I, I grabbed it, I put it behind here, and it looks like crap, but you know what? It's gonna reflect some of that heat back here. I may actually move the tent kind of behind where the camera is, just so I can take advantage of some of that heat reflected, and two, I can 
kind of relax a little more with having this tarp as an awning. Part of the air gun survival challenge is to test rifles under extreme conditions. The Safari is electronic and so I want to test the electronics in this gun and just see if it's really waterproof. So I'm going to go ahead, be crazy and leave this out here tonight and we'll check it in the morning and see if the electronics are still functioning. You don't like the rain, huh, Marley? You can't go out and find the bunnies, huh? It's starting to snow. I went ahead and made the call and moved the fire over in here. I dug a new pit, and that is underneath the tarp, so it's not going to get totally wet. I put the coals in there. I'm going to try and spruce it up a little with what wood I do have and that way I can at least try to stay dry underneath this tarp here. You guys can see I went ahead and moved this metal sheet and stuck it in here at an angle. You know what, it's better than nothing, it at least reflects a little bit of the heat back. At least I got some decent coals in here throwing off some heat so I can at least keep warm. It is getting cold. If it is snowing, I know it's, uh, it's definitely pretty cold out here. You get wet, you get hypothermia, and it can become a really dangerous situation. I've got a pretty decent jacket here. I do have layers. And I do have an extra pair of pants, which I'm going to change into before I go to sleep. But it's definitely nice having a fire, and it's definitely nice having that metal to reflect some of the heat back into the tent. Cheers you guys, definitely deserve some coffee after putting up with this today. It is absolutely pouring right now, just dumping. I mean, I'll bet you in the past hour we've gotten probably an inch and a half, two inches of rain, just dumping. And I'm planning on probably not having a fire tonight because there's not gonna be any way for me to get out and get some wood unless this dies down within the next hour because it's going to be getting dark pretty soon. So if that's the case, we'll probably just hunker down inside the tent and ride out the storm. The last time I camped in rain like this, I was with Lindsay and a couple of our real close friends and we had camped way up in the mountains. We were tent camping and it was pouring rain. The only tarp that I had I had a bunch of holes in it and we set this thing up kid you not we we're getting more wet underneath the tarp than we would have been just standing in the rain it was like a waterfall coming through those holes i gotta say it was probably one of the best camping trips we had it was a lot of fun being out there with our friends we we're celebrating uh, my good friend steve-o's birthday this was the first time that he had camped, I think, in a long time. <laughs> he handled it like a champ. I was kind of expecting everybody to say, hey, let's go home. But I was surprised. Everybody handled it really well. We had a lot of fun. We ended up cooking some stuff that night. You know, it just goes to tell you, you know, you can come out in bad weather like this and still have a good time. I'm really lucky to be able to come out and do this and bring you guys along. I hope you guys enjoy it. I had promised you guys at least one of these a week. I'm going to try and hold to it. It finally stopped raining. I think it was a good call to move the fire pit 
over in this corner so it's protected just in the event that it does rain. I was really glad I found that sheet of metal because that's gonna really help bring some of that heat back into the tent. I'm hoping it's gonna stay calm. I mean, it's obviously very foggy. Everything is just soaking wet. I was able to find two small logs that I think were dry enough. That's gonna give a good amount of heat back to the tent. We should be able to stay pretty comfortable tonight. I'm hoping tomorrow it's not gonna rain and we'll have at least a couple hours of clear weather to get out and do a little hunting. Right now it's about 8.30. We're getting snow. But we're almost out of fire here, but there's a good amount of coals in there giving off some heat. To be honest, I don't think it's really gonna do much for us tonight in the tent. This may have been a night we probably should have just stayed in the Jeep. We're gonna push through it, call it a night. We'll see you guys in the morning. Morning, you guys. It's about 8.15. It was really cold last night. It rained and snowed till probably about six o'clock this morning. We kind of just bundled up. I tried to get up and fluff up this fire, but there really just isn't much left in here to burn. But I am getting a little bit of heat off it, thankfully. I'm gonna make some coffee and then we're gonna go and take a look at that rifle and see how it fared spending the night out in the elements. So this rifle has been out here all night in snow and rain and we'll see if it works. I wanna see if the electronics will actually turn on. And to be honest, if anything, uh, the cold is usually I found what is the worst on electronics. I know my camera batteries usually always give me problems in cold weather. So let's see if this turns on. You guys can see it's on uh, high power. It's a bit low in pressure. I'm gonna have to fill it before we go out. I was not thinking this was gonna work. That's pretty cool. After filling up the rifle, Marley and I moved away from camp and we headed down an old mining trail towards the area that we had scouted the night before. Right now, Marley and I are just headed towards the crest of this hill right here where it's got a really nice overlook of the valley floor. Seems to be a pretty good spot. I'm really not expecting the animals to be very active, but I think we're gonna hang out for a little bit and see if I can spot any movement. And then I may put out the coyote collar. Marley and I sat for about an hour looking for any movement that we could find out in this big field. Really didn't see any activity other than a few birds. came out to this bluff and it's got a good overlook of this big canyon here behind us. I set up my remote flex tone collar 
ran it for a few minutes and wasn't able to spot anything. From my experience, you can usually set these out, let them run for a few minutes. You know, if you run it for like five or 10 minutes and you're not seeing anything, chances are there's nothing there and it's best to just move to a different location. Usually they come in within a few minutes from my experience. I know when I took uh, Nick Nielsen out, we got one in within two or three minutes. And so a lot of times if they're in the area, it happens really quick. So when you set it out, you really have to keep watch in all directions because they may actually come from behind us. So I usually keep Marley pretty close. I don't obviously want her getting tangled with a coyote. I think uh, I'm really liking this spot. I think we're gonna come back to it when the weather warms up. Chances are the coyotes move through here. I can see some trails down here. It looks to be a pretty good area for them. Beautiful place to hike. It turned out to be a fairly nice day. It's obviously pretty cloudy. I wish the sun would come out, but it looks as though it's probably going to be like this uh, most of the day. So we're going to work our way kind of behind where the camera is in a big circle back to our, our camp. We'll check back in. After working the higher elevations, Marley and I moved down to a big field that was covered in thick sagebrush where we worked through back to the camp. Sorry that the hunting wasn't that exciting on this trip, but we did find a few spots that have a lot of ground squirrel activity. I can see a lot of holes um, out in one of those fields that we were walking through. I did see some coyote tracks. We did see a few jackrabbits. I really like this camping spot, so I think we're gonna come back here when it warms up. I might bring Terry back here with me and we'll do a little bit of camping and see if we can have some better luck with the hunting. But we had fun, it's a beautiful place to hike around. Right now, I'm just making myself some lunch. I got some top ramen I'm gonna make and then I'm gonna start packing up the camp. This place is pretty close for me. It really only takes me about 45 minutes to get here. So I'm not in a real hurry to get back. Well guys, I had a fun trip. I hope you guys did. We really didn't have much activity with the hunting, but I still had the opportunity to get out with the safari. I was happy I had the chance to test it out last night. Under normal circumstances, somebody wouldn't leave a gun like this out in rain and snow. I thought that it was important to see how the electronics would handle those kind of conditions. So I'm happy that this definitely passed that test. And it's a great gun, definitely worthy of a coyote hunting rifle. We're gonna be back with this. We're gonna do some more hunts with this rifle. As I said before, this is just part of the testing this rifle will go through. I really just wanted to test the overall durability of the gun for the price range. I really appreciate you guys coming along with us. I had a good time. I hope you guys did. And we'll probably see you guys next week. Talk to you then.